in probability, we assume we know p, the chance of heads each time, and we ask questions like what's the probability of k heads in n tosses? But in statistics, we're going the other way. Given that we got some data, how likely are different values of p? The probability problem uses the binomial distribution. The statistics problem uses the beta distribution. The two situations are combined using Bayes' rule. You likely have seen it for two discrete random variables or two continuous random variables, but we're going to use the one with one continuous and one discrete random variable. Y stands for the discrete data. P stands for the probability of heads each time, which is going to be distributed continuously. The Bayes rule has four parts. Probability of Y given P is the probability problem, the binomial distribution. F of P is the density describing what we believe in advance about the possible values of P. P of Y is just the discrete probability of getting specific data values y. And f of p given y is going to be the updated belief about p after the data, which is the solution to the statistics problem. It turns out that if f of p is described with a beta distribution, then f of p given y will also be described with a beta distribution. So we say that the beta distribution is conjugate for the binomial. The beta distribution is defined using the beta function, which I covered in another video. Here's the integral that defines the beta function, which depends on two positive parameters, alpha and beta. The beta function has been integrated over x, so it doesn't depend on it. Therefore, we could divide both sides by beta and put it inside the integral. The new integrand is defined from 0 to 1. It's positive, and the total integral equals 1 which means it's a probability distribution. So this is the beta distribution. It's a constant times x to the alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the beta minus 1. Notice that if you plug in alpha equals 1 and beta equals 1, you get a constant in the integrand. So the beta function equals 1 and the beta distribution equals 1, which means it's a uniform distribution. This is actually a good way of describing total ignorance. If we have no idea what the probability p is, anything from 0 to 1 is equally likely, that's a uniform distribution, and it's one case of a beta distribution. Now let's put that all together. The binomial distribution is n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. f of p equals 1, describing total ignorance beforehand. For p of y, we're actually going to use a trick so that we don't need it. Just know that p of y is the integral of the joint density over p, which means it's independent of p. That's actually all we need to know about it. When we put all these pieces together, we get the new density of p, given the data, which is n choose k, p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k, times 1, and divided by a constant independent of p. So overall, that's a constant times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. But it's a probability distribution. And we know what has that form. That is a beta probability distribution. So instead of having to go through the work of finding the constant, we just recognize the form. The constant just has to normalize it. And therefore, we're looking at a beta distribution with parameter p, 1 plus k, and 1 plus n minus k. So starting with a uniform distribution for prior estimate, we end up with a beta distribution based on the data. But what if we already had some information about p? If we can describe that prior knowledge with a beta distribution, then fp is a constant times p to the a minus 1 times 1 minus p to the b minus 1. When we plug that into Bayes' rule, you can see we get powers of p that combine and powers of 1 minus p that combine, and everything else is constants, which means, again, it's a beta distribution. That's why we say that the beta distribution is conjugate for the binomial. If you start with a beta, you end with a beta. Finally, a word about the constants. Now, because gamma of n is n minus 1 factorial, 
and beta is defined with an integral with alpha minus 1 and beta minus 1, it's easy to make fence post errors, so you have to watch out for that. But if you carefully work it out, 1 over beta of alpha beta equals a plus b plus 1 times a plus b choose a. So you put that together with the p's and you get the beta distribution, and it looks like a binomial distribution. In fact, it's proportional but we're interpreting the formula in two different ways. a plus b plus 1 is just n plus 1. Without that factor in front, you have a discrete probability distribution, where p is known and you're finding the probability of getting a successes and b failures. But if you multiply by n plus 1, what you get it can be read as a continuous distribution, the beta distribution for the values of p given that you got data of A successes and B failures. I thought that was a very interesting relationship, so I made this video. Thanks for watching.